Hi everyone, I have just received this really, really lovely book. Now I am a huge fan of Laura Ingalls Wilder Little House on the Prairie books. Not so many of the TV programmes to be honest. Um, I don't know if we saw them very much in the UK. Um, but I'm a big fan, as I say, of the books. I've got them all still now. Sorry, I'm just fiddling with my... I've got a bit of a shadow coming across the book from something. I'm not sure what... Um, the sun's coming in a little bit. just going to put my light on so you can see the cover. We have a gold um, embossing on the cover and some of the pictures now. The book, um, the illustrations are from the Garth Williams um, illustrations from the books. Um, and they're from all nine books, it says, which is rather exciting. So let's have a little look at the back um, before we dive in. Um, <clears throat> this beautifully designed colouring book includes iconic artwork and quotes from all nine original Little House books. Join La Laura, her mom, and partner, sisters Mary, Carrie and Grace on their travels across the frontier, from the big woods of Wisconsin to the sprawling prairies of Kansas and on to the unsettled territory of, Dak of the Dakotas, Colour in heartwarming quotes, intricate patterns and your favourite pioneer characters and scenes as you revisit this classic series. As I say, I absolutely loved the um, the books. So I'm the, I popped this on my wish list and I was so excited to receive it. So should we have a look inside? <clears throat> now I was slightly, before I start, slightly thinking, you know, I'm used to seeing all these pictures in black and white. Adding colour is going to be a little bit odd, but... I decided that it would be a lot of fun so let's go so the cover is actually slightly textured I don't know how well that's picked up on the camera matte apart from the shiny bit and that's continued here it's very textured but the paper inside is really really smooth obviously I haven't coloured in it yet well I say obviously you don't know I haven't coloured in it yet so I don't know how um how how it's going to fare now the sun is starting to come in and cast a few shadows on here look but i think we'll leave the blind open for now because it's actually it produces a better light for a flip through i think than having the um than having the uh just the the blind shut so here we go this is the same as the um cover so we've got that to start with now a lot of the pictures are very grayscaley here because um that's how they were drawn so that's quite interesting but this one isn't so I, I think on that page to be honest i'd probably only color that one and that bit i might leave all these black and white i don't know so here we have all the copyrights on this page which the sun is catching but hopefully that's okay and here is our sort of intro so little house in the big woods obviously the very first book in the series now that one i've read so many times my mum had a hardback copy that she had been given as a little girl and it was gorgeous it didn't have a dust wrapper but it was absolutely lovely and i read and read and read it so many times i think my niece has it now just such a lovely book so we have the snowy scene there's a lot of snow so here we have a lovely picture of um mary and laura and ma and pa walking in the woods really lovely it's very nice again a grayscale type picture it's going to be a bit of a learning curve for me but i'm very happy to learn and we have their house i remember reading about how they made the house um out of um trees um and wood and things it's lovely and so we have a bit of text and you know, just, i'm not going to read all the text because there's probably quite a bit but it's open so you can fill it in with color which i think is fun so what i will probably do oh there's a train is uh use the colors from the picture and use one of those colors i may do pens i may do pencils i've got no idea if pens are going to go through the page that's always my worry and here they are playing with the pig's bladder and the maple syrup i remember this scene and churning the butter and making the bed look at the lovely little quilt that's really nice and ah oh, there's laura's doll and uh, she was always a little bit jealous of her sister having a proper rag doll and she didn't have one and it's a lovely picture of the attic bedroom i think all the where they were storing all the all the fruit and veg we've got pumpkins and things in there and here we have the um 
pig. Um, what else is going? It's quite an interesting wallpaper type repeating page. Lots of different, um, you know, got the rabbit over and over, which is interesting. I hope this sun isn't too irritating. I think it's really um, better to have, as I say, the blind open. And here we move on to Farmer Boy. So this is Almanzo. I haven't read this book anything like as many times. I didn't have this. Uh, as, I, as I got older, I bought Little House on the Prairie after um, Little House in the Big Woods with some of my pocket money. And then I slowly built up the series, but I don't think I had Farmer Boy for a really long time. So it's not one I'm that familiar with. We have lots of shoes. Really interesting. Lovely cart of hay. And we have a lovely scene of the family all together, as well as bits and pieces from their home. Okay. And look at that. Wow. That's, uh, that's going to be an interesting one to do. All the people, there's some sort of parade. We've got flags to colour in. Wow. And here we have um, a bear. <laughs> It's, it looks so cute. I'm sure if I was that close to a bear and I was that small, I would not be thinking, oh, that's cute. <laughs> oh, now we're into Little House on the Prairie. Again, one more one I'm more familiar with. So we have Jack, the um, bulldog, and uh, the girls outside, Mary and Laura. And here we have the wagon. Of course, they're always travelling in their wagon. The girls always looking out the back and a really pretty um, little scene there. And what do we have on this page? We have more prairie and I think Mary was looking for a gopher which is here and here, chasing them. And here is Pa making the house. Look, I remember this picture where he chips out the logs and they sit inside each other and eventually builds a house. It makes it sound so easy. Oh, we we'll just get a few trees, chop them up, there's a house. <laughs> We've got some lovely little birds in that picture though to colour, which is really pretty. And here are the girls. So, um, they're threading beads, I think. Um, <laughs> this is a good quote where um, Laura gets so cross with Mary um, she doesn't like being good that's fun especially on Sundays I think they had to sit, they couldn't do any work they had to just read, things like that and here's Jack and I think this was a, f a friend, is it Ned? I can't remember um, Jack scared him but uh, lots of pictures of Jack there And here they are in the wagon again. So Mars doing her ironing in the wagon. Imagine I finding it hard having a kitchen. Imagine having just a wagon. My goodness, look at that path through there. On the banks of Plum Creek. Now we have three girls here. Is that Carrie? I wonder if we have Carrie by now. I'm not sure. It's really pretty tree and water like that. <clears throat> so here's the wagon again. I remember that their house was in the um, built into the um, sort of ground, which is really interesting. And they're always in the creek catching fish and things like that. I wonder what that is. Hmm. I have to have a look at the book. I can't remember. Interesting. And then they got a swing. Yeah, they were climbing down the hay pile, rolling down. Fun. I think this is Nelly. Nelly? No. I got the name wrong. I can't remember. The girl that they didn't get on with very well. And look at this, this would be a lovely spring picture with all these flowers and little chicks and things. So pretty in their hats to wear it in the sunshine. Ah, there she is. Um, not um, being quite cross. I don't know, this is their cousin, isn't it, I think? Is it Christmas time, maybe? She didn't want her having a doll. I can't really remember. Now we're by the shores of Silver Lake, so we have lots of horses here. So, yes, I, there's uh, 
someone coming so she's just looking outside I like that she's got bare feet and uh, they're on the uh, tram going into town they were a lot nearer to town I think needs to go and shop it's quite fun for them and uh, traveling in the wagon oh yes she climbed on the horse and it wasn't very tame and uh, have wolves look how scared they are it's quite snowy in that one that's fun oh, and there's the cat Su Susie Suki I can't remember Pa playing his uh, sorry you have shop fiddle for oh, the long winter this is quite a difficult read because they nearly starve to death because it's so cold so uh, they uh, they're all wrapped up warm by the fire. They've got hardly any fuel for the fire. And uh, I'm assuming this might be Almanzo. I can't remember now. Yes, that's that's Almanzo and his brother there. They had lots of grain and they were quite well off, as I seem to remember, in the winter. Look at this. We've got all sorts of little mini repeating pattern. I quite like that quite fun isn't it but look how Laura and Pa are trying to um, get the hay into piles ready to burn because they haven't got anything else to keep warm a little town on the prairie so they lived in the town for a while I think Pa worked in town he's taken Laura with him look into the town and uh, she's feeding a little calf it's such a cute picture Ah, oh, look at the kitten. So cute. Look at all the chicks. Look, in Ma's apron. So, so sweet. Now, this is where they were going to school because they were near to the town. They could go to a school. And uh, quite cross. Now, the Happy Golden Ears is a. I didn't have this one for a long old time either. And uh, Laura, I think, had met Almanzo and they were dating. And then um, Mary um, needed to go to college because she was blind. So Laura had to go to work to pay for her to go to college. And so she became a teacher. Here's her in the school. And uh, some of the children were older than her. So she found it, especially the boys, they found it really difficult. And she lived with a family while she was teaching that she didn't really like. So she found that really hard. But uh, Almanza would come and get her at the weekend and take her home. So she was so happy and look, get married. Spoiler. <laughs> and the first four years is their first four years of married life. It wasn't easy. So uh, it's not such a happy um, time. This is a very dark picture. I have no idea how to uh, attempt adding a bit of colour to that. Maybe I wouldn't. Maybe leave that one. Do this one. You got the baby. Um, what's she called? Rose. And there's Rose. Uh, and them in a wagon. Very nice. Oh, look at the. I remember this um, Christmas where they made heart-shaped cookies and things. A little bit of information. This is the very back cover about Laura Ingalls and uh, and Garth Williams. So there we go. So it's a lovely book. I'm going to choose a picture to colour now with you from the book and I can tell you a little bit about the paper as I colour as well. I'm just going to stop, choose a page and find some pencils and come back to you. Right, I am back. I thought I would choose this page, this picture here, just this little bit. Obviously we've got a lot going on in this page but I thought I'd just choose this small bit because um, I think it will take some time to colour. If it doesn't take too long I'll do a little bit more. But let's come in and have a look because as we're at that time of sort of autumn time of year, it felt nice to colour something like this. So we've got our basket of apples and our pumpkin or squash. I don't know. Um, a pumpkin being a type of squash. I never quite know what to call it. Um, so let's go um, and get started. Now I'm thinking um, polychromos. I just happen to have them here. And I just decided, because I don't know what this paper's like, it's, you know, I thought polychromos are quite versatile. They work on lots of different papers. So let's just go for them, was my decision, really. 
So let's make a start with the brown ochre and I'm going to do the whole of the basket with this to start with and then just see how it goes down and how it looks really. Now I thought that I wouldn't use a pencil that was too um, waxy or no oily I don't know more like prismas because they might smudge a bit more on a really smooth paper so I thought I would use something that was a little bit um, um, a little bit harder I thought it might suit the paper better and it's going down nicely I'm not um, I'm applying an even ish pressure across across it to try and um, get an even I don't know if you can hear that noise my husband's in the shower the boiler is really noisy I think it'll be better once it's got a cupboard built around it <sighs> So there is the basket colour. I'm going to add some darker parts to it. It's going to grab a sharpener. Okay, so this is the Van Dyke Brown. Ooh, let's pop it down there for you. There we go. And I'm going to look at where the darker areas are actually marked on here and just do those to start with. So end of there. It makes it easy for us. Can work out. Don't need to worry about where to add the colour because it tells us. So I'm just going over all of those darker lines with my brown. Now you could um, obviously do a bit of your own thing. Have to don't have to follow exactly what you're being guided to do. I'm just doing that at the minute. I mean you could just put down one layer of colour and not even add any more because it's sort of here for you. But uh, I'm just going to gently add a little more. It makes it more fun for me. I'm sort of thinking of adding a bit of a deeper bit between each bit of basket weave. I think there would be some texture in there. Like that. Hmm. We haven't done anything here. Let's put a bit more there. Now I'm thinking about the apples while I'm doing this and I'm thinking I'm going to do them red just because they'll stand out nicely and we've got leaves which we can do in green. With an apple, I tend to do a orangey reddish sort of colour. <laughs> she says vaguely. Um, I'm going to use the light cadmium red. Okay. And I'm just going to go over all of them. Now, on this sort of page, you have two choices really. You can do each of the little pictures where it repeats identically to the other one. Or you can do everyone differently. If you do everyone differently, it's a lot of work. You've got to keep thinking of something a little bit different to do. So you could do red apples, green apples, yellow apples, different shades of green, different shades of red, a mix of red and green, you know. But it's a lot easier to uh, just do them all the same. And that's what I'm going to do. And I think it matches the sort of wallpaper style of the picture, really. So that's just the red. I'm going to grab, um, I want to do some shadows, but I want to do them in red. I think I want to do them in brown. I'm going to use the walnut brown to do the shadowing on the apples. So I'm going to use again the uh, marks that are here as a guide. I'm just going around where the darker areas have been marked on and it just emphasizes it a little bit more like that oh excuse me sniffing I could be coldy today I'm fine it's just a bit annoying really <laughs> and the leaves I've grabbed the permanent green I don't know if it's going to be a little bit too light but I shall give it a go we can always add some darker colour on top which I'll probably do like 
quite nice in that I don't have to push down very hard or do very much for it to um, get a lot of colour out of these and um, obviously polys you normally have to um, layer up a fair bit but I don't seem to have to do that too much here which is nice. Now this is the um, chrome oxide green I'm just going to use sorry there you go um, for I think I'll put it across the centre of the leaves There we go. Ooh. Now we've got our pumpkin. I'm never very confident colouring pumpkins because I know those of you who are in the USA um, celebrate um, Halloween with great gusto, orange glaze, and know exactly how to do these. But we don't do that here very much, so I really don't know quite how bright or dark to do this one and with those lines it almost looks like there should be some green coming down here but I'm going to use this orange glaze to get a I'm not pressing very hard I don't want a really vibrant colour yet because I haven't quite thought about what I'm doing <laughs> so I'm just going to uh, do it quite roughly My neighbour is playing the piano. I do hope you um, can't hear it too much because I'm not allowed to play music. Uh, hopefully not. Okay, so I've done that rough. It needs more, obviously, but that's my rough start. I think I'm going to use a um, terracotta to do these um, darker areas. And then... Um, go from there really we need the little stalky bit I'm never sure whether it's green or orange but I should do it green just so it's a bit different I should really have a it'd be easier if I had a picture wouldn't it <laughs> but hey ho I'd have to admit that these pictures are so beautiful that I'm really a bit frightened colouring them in but I'm going to go for it because you know that's what the book's for. But uh, I know that a lot of you have the same thoughts when you're colouring some books. That's not really dark enough. I'm going to go in with a darker colour. I'm going to use this walnut brown just to do a little bit more in there. And then we'll add a little bit more shape, hopefully, to the uh, pumpkin. So uh, yeah, I get a little bit worried about doing such beautiful pictures, but I have to think, well, that's why I've been given the book, to colour and enjoy, and boy am I enjoying this, it's lovely fun. So I'm putting my terracotta colour just behind um, where I've done that walnut brown. And uh, you'll see what my plan is as we go, hopefully. Just a little bit up there as well. I'm going to go back to my orange glaze and layer it up a little bit more. So here I'm just going to add quite a dark bit. But here, I'm going to add it on top of that terracotta, put more here. Try and have a little faded bit in the middle. Because I'm thinking... I think these lines are supposed to be the dips of the um, pumpkin. So if I can make these bits darker and make it slightly more faded in that centre part, then it might look a bit more like that's what's happening. Let's see how we go. I'm putting a little more in the middle as well because it is quite pale. And then we've got the bit at the top as well, like that. And then we've got that little stalk. Um, yeah, I think this colour will work. This is the chromium green opaque. Do the little stalky bit. There we go. 
Now we've got a bit of shadow on the ground. I'm going to emphasise that a bit. I can just feel that where I've been colouring. Um, I'm trying to decide what colour to do for the shadow. I want a slightly browny shadow. I think I use the dark sepia. It's huge, my dark sepia. <laughs> and I'm just going to go over where it is. Just a little bit more. I just, it's nice to feel that I've added a bit to the picture, if you know what I mean, rather than it not being, rather than that bit having no colour. There we go. So there is that bit. So, oh, let's pop it in the middle for you. So that is that little bit. As I say, I will do the rest um, in a similar um, way. Um, I'm trying to see what else we've got going on here. We've got some hay here. Does be quite um I don't is it yellow? Is it browny yellow? Is it green gold? Not sure. So I shall probably look at picture and do that, work out. And then we have Almanzo. Um, let's find a picture of him that I can get in shot. There he is with chickens. Now these look like they might be white birds and this one might be brown, I'm not sure, but I shall do something with the ground. Um do his some um, skin tone. Um, his trousers are already very dark. I might just go over them with a brown. Should we do some? Should we do them? Let's have a go. Let's try a walnut brown on his trousers and see if it works. If we can actually see anything. I think it shows up a tiny bit. But I feel like I've done something then. I don't want to feel like I haven't coloured it. I'm thinking his shirt might be not completely white maybe it will be slightly not discolored maybe cream i'm gonna grab this i don't know if it'll work this is the um ivory let's see whether it actually shows up at all oh yeah you can see then it doesn't look completely white I can see. Oh, I can't see in the camera. The sun's in my eyes. I think that's good. Now we've got some skin tone going on. I'm going to do it quite pale, although he may not be really pale. I'm going to use the um, light flesh, which you might find is called in your set. I've written down the new names. Beige red. Okay. I'm going to do his face. I don't know what colour hair he's got. I can't remember. So that isn't good. Arms, little bare feet. Nice feet are quite dirty, I would imagine. Now, I can't remember what colour his hair is, so I'm going to just do it brown, I think. Um, let's use the Van Dyke brown. Ooh, there we go. There he is. I've left a few darker and lighter areas because hair isn't all one colour. Um, we've got a feed bowl with some feed in. I'm thinking the chicken feed might be quite pale like grains. So I'm going to use this um, light yellow ochre for the seeds, which I'm thinking are there. And here. A little bit tricky on the ground because I've got to draw the soil in. But pop some down and see what happens later. Um, hmm. Now we've got the pot he's holding. Let's do that a fairly pale. Here we go. I can't pick up the pencil I want. There we go. A green gold. Oh, it's a bit close to the seed colour, isn't it? Let's uh, go over that. Hang on. I'm just going to sharpen the pencil I need. Here we go. Um, brown ochre. Go back. Go over the top of that. I do a bit darker at the edges. It's quite golden now. 
still too pale. <laughs> this won't be. <laughs> Let's put a bit of this over the top. It's not as dark as it would be because we've got all those lighter colours underneath. But at least now we can actually see the seed in there, so that's better. Now hens. Um, sort of I'm thinking a sienna brown for some of these hens, a burnt sienna then. This one to me looks brown. I think it's quite a nice colour for her. I'm not going to go do too much, um, worry too much about too much detailing. And this one also looks brown. I'm wondering whether to do them all brown or else if I leave them white it might just look like I haven't bothered to colour them. I quite like them in the idea of them being white but it's uh... now this one a bit darker in the background so that it shows up. You could do them white and shade them with some greys and things but I'm not very good at colouring in white so that's why I've chosen to just do it like this and it's quite, I'm keeping it really simple. Just putting a bit more colour down on the ones that are a bit further away really. Now the ground, um, I'm sort of thinking a dark sepia might be a good colour. Um, just because it's um, sort of dirt. I guess you could do it as grass. But I'm thinking more that it looks like they're sort of scrubbing about in dirt. I mean if we got the book out, which I've got just behind, it's actually in this room, um, I could look and see, but um, I'm in the flow of colouring now. Now that's quite grey, I am going to go over it with a brown. I'm going to use the, um, um, not that one, um, where is it, here we go, the walnut brown, oops there you go, just to Add a little bit more brown to make it look a bit more like soil. And I wonder what colour the soil might be red in some, like where my um, father in law lives, the soil's red. But uh, there we go. Now I want to do the hay. Have we got a bit? Hmm, not on here. We'll do, we'll do that one. I know it's slightly cut off but I think we'll manage. So we've got the handle of the hay fork which I shall do first with um, burnt sienna. I'm sort of sticking to a colour palette really because I've got a pile of pencils next to me. I'm just grabbing from those. Can make it a bit darker at each end. I don't know why <laughs> but it is. Now I'm thinking I quite like green gold hay. It's particularly here so I've got my green gold, whoops, let me show you, I just want to show up, hang on, there we go, I can't see very well, sun's in my eyes. So I'm going to do a scrubby bit here where it's really dark, just in this green, hold my book still, just in this green gold, and then I'm going to get a lighter colour where it's a bit lighter, and use... Um, I think I'm going to use this, yeah. Whoops, it doesn't want me to pick it up. The light yellow ochre that we've used earlier for the seed, I'm going to use that for the rest. It's a bit paler. Now, if you think about what direction you're colouring in here, it's just a haystack. It's messy. So there's lots of lines. So I'm sort of doing it quite scribbly and hoping that it will look like I've been trying to get a texture rather than scribbling but we'll see just put down this colour and then this one I'm going to do it more directional because that's how it's drawn now in the um, pictures where you can see this bit of the haystack there the, this goes down here. I would probably um, draw that in a brown, like it's twine, but here it's black, so I may still go over it a little bit for you to show you. 
got the ends all here, look, so I'm trying to sort of, again, do a bit of directional colouring, make it look a bit more bitty, and I'm actually going to get another colour, I'm going to go back to the green gold, and do some lines, like this, and through this bit too. Yeah. Gosh, I'm hungry. What time is it? It's quarter to eleven. <laughs> Oops. I'm not really hungry. I'm just thinking about food. I think I'll go and get a drink. That'll sort me out. Here we go. So there's the straw. So we've actually now done the three. Let's come out for you. There you can see I've done those three. And I will do the rest of the page identically to that and oh, the sun is shining right in the middle of the picture but uh, hopefully that uh, allows you to see sorry all the shadows are because of the tripod and the camera and the lamp and everything but um, it's still a bit of a brighter light for you so there we go so that's me started on that um, which is brilliant because it's I think the first picture in the first book especially when it's something like this which is a little bit different to what I've done before it's really daunting but that was great fun so I'm really looking forward to doing the rest of the page which I may get time to do later on today which is exciting but for now thank you for watching um, I hope that was fun if there are any particular pictures you want me to do in the book, let me know in the comments because it's the sort of book that I may just keep to myself and do and then share with you in my um, pictures and end of month pictures because I know it's not one that lots of people will have. Um, so I t try and tend to do my videos from books that I think more people might have or it might have things in that people ha want to know how to colour. So I may not do so much in this book's on video so if you do want as I say if you do want to see if there's any particular pages you'd like to see done or particular items or you've just got this book and you you know whatever let me know and uh, I will see what I can do because I always like to have ideas I've always got loads of ideas for videos but having ideas from people who actually want to watch them <laughs> is really good but um, thank you for watching um, I hope you have a lovely day and happy colouring